my friends. So after I had my telepathic window leaping adventure, which you can watch about in my previous video, uh, I was ready to go deeper. Uh, I took plenty of time to rest and recover, and integrate and absorb what happened in that prior experience. And uh, then I started doing my research. Um, I had already been experimenting with ecstasy and other kinds of drugs and um, being very careful about um, looking into side effects and you know um, possible things to look out for and, and what each of the character of each of these different substances. And um, as I was doing my research, I came across the book DMT, The Spirit Molecule by Rick Strassman. And it made me incredibly fascinated to um, explore with DMT. And from the accounts of a lot of people I was uh, reading, it, um, it seemed to be a common consensus that DMT is like the pinnacle of the psychedelic experience. Um, very fast acting, very powerful, um, uh, short, and, um, and and kind of this like intensely otherworldly experience was what I was reading about it. And um, at the time when I was in Los Angeles at a big university, it was um, drugs were really easy to find. Um, any kind of like like ecstasy, cocaine, acid, mushrooms, anything. It was was very readily available. Um, but DMT was really hard to find, and I think it's because. Um, it's not a party drug. <laughs> it's not something that you can do and like have fun with other people. It's a very solo experience. You get completely blasted into a different reality. You have no awareness of your physical body. Um, and because of that, I think people just um, weren't that interested in it. So it took me quite a long time to find it. But um, eventually I, I met a friend who was also very interested in exploring DMT and these other kinds of realms. And um, he was able to help me procure some. And I got just enough to have um, two doses, one for me and one for my girlfriend at the time. And um, I didn't want to waste it. I really wanted to like do it properly. So I was reading a lot about like how to smoke it right. And it's not like, um, it's not like a weed that you can just light it and smoke it. Like you have to vaporize it. And there's like kind of different methods and you know, people have all their different opinions on like the best way to smoke it. Um, and so I'm reading all of this and I, I read about um, a, a guy who tried to smoke DMT several times and just nothing happened. And I met, had a friend at school who said the same thing, that he had tried it multiple times and just zero effect. And apparently this is something that can happen to some people. And so I was kind of like, oh, I don't want that to happen with now that I've gotten this, uh, this uh, special prize substance. And um, I, I read online that this guy who had had this experience um, nothing happened nothing happened and then he tried smoking it while tripping on acid and it activated the experience so i was like i want to do that let's do that um i would not recommend it as a starting point for dmt um i since uh had the opportunity to meet uh, mitch schultz who's the director of dmt the spirit molecule and um when i told him that this was the way that i smoked the dmt the first time he was like oh that's the only way to do it that's the way you got to do it <laughs> and so some people really love this but it's um it makes the experience um, uh, much more amplified and intense, as you can imagine. So um, uh, not a good starting point for DMT, I would say. Um, but so a group of friends again get together, um, go over to my friend's house. And my friend just lives, lives just outside of Los Angeles. And her mom was a geologist. And uh, she became a lifetime geologist and then had this kind of like spiritual awakening later in life and got into all this yoga and meditation and chanting and like spiritual stuff. And our friend group would kind of make fun of her, including her daughter. You know, we'd all make fun of her and be like, oh, she's like the mystic crystal lady. And after we went to her house and had this uh, trip experience, I was not laughing anymore. <laughs> uh, we go to their house. We take the LSD, it's a group of about six of us. We go on a little walk around the neighborhood, come back to the house, it's like mid afternoon. We come into my friend's room and she has this case and the whole house is full of crystals. There's just like museum level, like crystal display cases all over the house. And then in my friend's room, she has this case with all of these different stones, probably 50 different stones, you know, about that big. We go into the room and my friend and I look at each other and we see the case and the case is just like, whoop, 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 just reverberating energy out of it. I open the door to the case, I pick up one of the stones, and as soon as I pick it up, it's like this 
bolt of electricity it shoots into my arm and I can feel this just the vibrations like coming off of the stone and it it felt like a living being like I didn't I didn't feel I did not believe that stones were alive before that but then picking it up it, it was so like palpable that it was just vibrating like a living entity um, but unlike you know the way I describe it is it had this vibration coming out of it um, and a human being is this kind of like complex symphony of all these different like feelings and thoughts and uh, actions happening, you know, emotionally and chemically and all these different things. And this stone was just like one note. It was just like one clear vibration. And as I picked it up, it started to warp and the, the, the little nodes of the crystal are, are starting to like fold into each other. It looks kind of like, um, in Doctor Strange where they go into the mirror dimension and all the buildings start like warping and twisting around. It looks just like that. And it looks like I can see down like into the molecular structure of the stone and it was like, it was like the stone was like showing me something about the nature of reality that was not intellectual, but it was like the vibrations from it and putting my awareness in this um, altered entheogenic state was able to like transmit this uh, this like awareness and understanding about uh, stones sure, of space time is the only way I can put it. And I put the stone down and I picked up another one and it, it was the same but it had like a completely different sound to it. It was like each stone had like its own voice and like its own kind of like personality to it. And they were all, you know, it was like a different texture and so one was this kind of like, like, like wobbling sort of feeling and then another one had this like just kind of piercing like clear note to it. Uh, it's really, really amazing. So we put the stones down and we're kind of like exploring the space, reading. There's this uh, book of Alex Gray paintings there and I'm like leafing through the paintings just like and tripping, like looking at those paintings, just like, wow, this is, this is how reality is. And I, I, I feel like Alex Gray has masterfully pioneered something and that he's able to create these like anatomical drawings of the psychedelic experience of what happens, what do you see when you're in in this kind of like open perception of energy. So we're having the, these kind of like amazing things happening. We're really enjoying the experience. And then my girlfriend and I decide to sit down and smoke the DMT. And we get it. And I'm already tripping so hard that I put the DMT on a piece of paper and I can, it's hard to even tell like where the DMT crystals are because there's these like lines of light energy like connecting the different pieces of the of the DMT, the crystallized DMT, like this energy grid. And so I'm like having a hard time even seeing like what is actually the physical substance and what's the what's the like energetic <laughs> vision that I'm seeing. But so we get it and I, I tip it into the pipe. We sit back and take a big rip and smoke it and lean back into the chair. And normally I've done DMT again since then, then and under, if you're, if you're just sober and you smoke DMT, I would say the experience lasts like maybe 20 minutes tops. Like the, like you, you come up really fast, it's probably like, you know, 40 seconds to a minute to the, as it, as it lifts into the experience. And then there's a peak of it that's maybe like five or 10 minutes of an experience. And then it tapers down and then after 20 minutes, 25 minutes, it's pretty much over and then you're back to normal consciousness. But smoking it on LSD just stretched the experience way out. So I would say that the peak of it lasted probably like an hour and then it slowly, slowly tapered down over the next like five hours or something like that. And so, and the, the whole, the first hour I couldn't even move, like I couldn't even get up off of the couch. and. It was um, so powerful and so intense, and I just remember like how um, how overwhelmingly profound it was. But it was also really hard to like remember it. Even now, telling it, I can I can kind of when I tune into it in my memory, I can tune into the feeling. And there's these kind of like images, like just glimpses of images. But it's like a dream that fades away really quickly. Like I remember it being so vivid and intense, but then it, it just like, it faded away. And I knew that that, I had read that that is a, a phenomenon that happens, that it's like hard to grasp onto the memory of the trip, like after it happens, just like a dream. But we go up into it and it's this feeling of seeing like 
what what's like an eye but it's like this and every time i've done dmt it looks a little different like the colors and geometries are different but it's like this mandala that has a center point and it feels like an eye that's looking at you like this enormous like awareness that's looking at you and it feels like like the only word that i can find from like literature about what this is is like the godhead like it's like this 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 being that is infinite but it's somehow you're seeing it as like a form so it, it's, it's like colors and shapes and things like this but it's this feeling that you're getting this glimpse like into infinity and this first time that it happened it was so frightening so alien it's like this feeling that i'm like seeing god but it's just this just very uh very neutral non-judgmental but penetrating alien gaze like looking back at you that just penetrating can just see through every part of you so intense and what i've read is that you know when that if you can surrender into that then you know the common experience that people have is they surrender into it and melt into the membrane and then there's like things that happen on the other side and in this first experience i was uh it felt like i was too afraid to let go into it because it's asking you to fall into it but it's the feeling that you're gonna die it feels like you're it feels like you're gonna completely you're not just physically die but like your entire consciousness is going to be disintegrated that that's what the feeling is and it was like something in me kind of was gripping and like not wanting to let go into it all the way but it was still this like incredibly powerful profound experience and and then the fascinating most fascinating part about this was in the normal DMT experience because it comes down pretty quickly it's like oh I'm up in it and then I come down but then because it had this long long like slow taper down out of it like I start to come back into consciousness and I start to see the the room and the room starts to like come back into focus and I can see the walls and it was like the DMT universe then became inter interlaid like with the room that I was in. So I'm seeing the walls, but everything is like this, this kind of like, it feels like this ancient, but futuristic, like light temple. Like it has this kind of like Egyptian, but it's like, it's all like made up of, of, of just like all kinds of colors and light. And it feels like it's technology, but like has this kind of like ancient magic feel it, feeling to it everything in the room is starting to become like that and then I start to be able to like I'm, I'm like aware that I'm in a body again and I'm aware that I'm sitting on this on this couch my other friends are sitting down on the floor and then this this moment happened where my friend is sitting cross-legged on the ground and she stands up and walks across the room and visually the way I could describe it visually is that it's like it looks like a light trail like she stands up and it's like it's like she's leaving like this trail behind her but what i what was happening is that i was it was like i was getting stretched out in time so like normally we're just experiencing time in these instants like like uh in when you like a movie when you watch a movie it's frames that are in a sequence and those those sequential frames put together create this continuity of a linear experience and we experience life like that it's like just moment and moment and moment but then when this happened, it was like I was seeing her sitting on the ground and standing up on the other side of the room and everywhere in between all at the same time. And also like it was like my my realizing that that my thought process was also getting stretched out in time. So like my realization of what I was seeing and seeing her on the ground were getting like overlapped on each other. It was like the it was like time was kind of and it's not not just stretched out but it was kind of stretched out and then like folding over itself so it was like my my memory was kind of like go backwards into what was happening like a few seconds prior and so it was like this whole like time dilation like time warping experience and because i had the uh the ability to anchor it into seeing something physical into actually seeing my friend move like that it like settled into my body and what I know, what I remember, is that the whole DMT trip felt like that. Like that whole thing of like going into the mandala and the colors felt like that. Like it was this time warping experience. And like, I know when I, when I think back into it, that it just feels like these little glimpses. But I know I can also remember the feeling of being 
in that and feeling like that it's just never gonna end even if it's even if it didn't last that long it's just this feeling that like it's just this endless time warp because it, it takes you out of this like linear perspective of time incredibly powerful as I was coming down out of this DMT space there were two things that struck my intuition really strongly one was the desire to record uh, the story of what had just happened. Um, I opened my friend's laptop and hit the record button and I knew that I wanted to do this before so I had the computer set up ready to go so I could just hit record and start speaking as soon as I was capable of it. I don't think what I said made any sense or was coherent. It was, it was just, <laughs> just like this babbling like trying to catch like threads of this really disjointed like multi-dimensional experience. But I was also hit by the desire to put on some music and I went to the music player and, and, and immediately I was like, that song is the one. And I played it. And I had such a strong feeling that the music is a well-known song, that the music and the lyrics and everything about this song was written just for me in that moment, just for me to help me come down and integrate and understand what the experience I just had was. And it was just perfect. It was like every word was like perfectly aligned for that moment. And I reflected on that later and I was like, like in the moment, I was like, did these, uh, did these artists just write that for me? Like that was the experience. And what struck me from all of my entheogenic journeys is this, this feeling that it is all for you. I was walking down the street one day and I saw a sticker on a light post. It was a piece of art and it said, all of this is for you. And it just made all the hairs on my body stand up because it was it took me back into that feeling of the dmt trip of like everything in this reality is orchestrated just for me just for you and it's this paradox it's this uh this paradox that's like the foundation of existence is my perspective now and it's the paradox that the multiverse, the existence, everything is so infinite and so vast and we're such a tiny, tiny, small piece of it. But at the same time, we're the center of the universe and everything that's happening is coordinated for our benefit. It's, it's a mind fuck. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to the linear logical brain. But when you go into these experiences and you surrender into it, that's just this profound grokking realization that comes out of the body, in my experience. Since this DMT trip, I've had these other moments of encountering this Godhead, this infinite flower fractal eye looking back at me. There was this time that I was uh, at a Qigong retreat in Mount Shasta, and had been doing the, you know, been in this really, really clean environment, getting in the cold, this cold river like and doing breath work and doing all these qigong practices eating super healthy for a week with all these you know very uh very magical people and uh i was camping in the woods and i had just smoked like half a joint with a friend of mine and we i go into the woods no other substances i go into the woods sit down by my tent and i sit down and plant my feet on the ground and start meditating there and there's this feeling like my whole body is like sinking into clay like it feels like there's this kind of wet clay bed that's like my feet are sinking into it and it feels really good and it's just feeling like washing up over me and it comes up and it's coming up and then it comes up to my neck and right when it got to my head I had this kind of like feeling of fear of like oh I don't want to let go of my mind like I don't want to let go of like my sovereignty of my own consciousness and then I, I breathed and I just relaxed and I surrendered into it and I let go and it washed over my head and then as soon as it came over my head, I was just like thrown into this vision. It was just like the DMT trip, just from a little bit of weed. And I go into this vision and I'm seeing this fractal flower thing again. But this time it was different. It was like, it felt like this friend. It felt like this friendly energy. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it with my inner eye, with my eyes closed, but I can see it really vividly. And I'm looking at it and it's almost, I'm having this like communication with it and I'm like, oh, like, are you, are you God? Like, are you like a friend? And then it, it's almost like the feeling I was getting was that it was kind of like winking at me. And then I'm like, oh, maybe you're like a parent. And then it's, it, the feeling of it shifted and it kind of, it became that. And it was almost like it was saying to me like, oh, I'm just a reflection of you. 
on this infinite cosmic alien being, but I'm a part of you and I'm a reflection of your own heart at the same time. A lot of people say that when you take psychedelics, you're just seeing something that's a reflection of your own consciousness. I think that's true. But the twist to that is everything in our existence is a reflection of our consciousness. There's no, this, this idea of a simulation reality, I think it's very true. But the, the, the thinking trap in the phrasing of it's a simulation reality is like a simulation of what? You know, Elon Musk talks about like, oh, we can't be at, there's the likelihood that we're in the base level reality is so low. I said, why is there have to be a base reality? Because the whole thing springs from nothing. And this is, this is the revelation that I've had that many other people I know have had. When you go deep into these experiences, when you go deep into opening the body, letting go of the mind's thought process and stepping into a kind of gnosis or direct knowing a direct knowing that the, the cells, every atom in our being has a memory of what we are. But we have to let go of our preconceived belief systems in order to tap into that. And when we tap into that, it, it, we see the truth that everything in existence is born from nothing. Everything in existence is a paradox. It's frightening to come into contact with it because it really, it challenges everything about our, our bio, biological programming and our social condition programming and it, it asks us to like let go of so much to be able to perceive that. So it's quite a journey to step into this. Since that experience, I've done DMT a couple more times and now I'm of the opinion that um, it's not really a medicine for me. Uh, I think it's incredibly um, powerful and a, amazing experience, um, but it's hard to get anything out of it. It's hard to, it, it's just, um, it's so amazing. <laughs> you go into it and it's just like, wow. And Terrence McKenna said this thing that, um, you know, people say, uh, is DMT dangerous? <laughs> he said, not unless you're afraid of death by astonishment. And I totally understand that. It's just mind blowing. But then you come down and it slips away and it's hard to it's hard to make sense of it it's hard to bring anything back into the body and in, in my opinion now it's like this the psychedelic experience is um a, a, so amazing and so beautiful but um there it's not important unless you're bringing something back unless you're bringing something into your body unless you're bringing something that can transmute into physical experience and i don't mean that as like oh you have to like give your gifts into the world that's part of it but then another part of it is if you're not grounding it if you're not anchoring it you can get lost in those spaces you can have your consciousness fracture and like pieces of yourself get stuck in those realms i met a guy who said he had a friend who started doing dmt a lot and going into these um other dimensions and talking to these dmt entities and this is a common experience that people meet these DMT entities and they, they have this kind of language that they speak. And this guy started talking to these DMT entities and learning to speak their language and, and admit sounds like in the way that they talked. And he did it so much that he forgot how to speak English and he had to be institutionalized after that. And so that kind of thing can happen. And you know, the, the psychedelics are, they're such profound tools, but you really have to be careful with how you approach them because you can get splintered. And I felt the edge of that. And I felt like parts of myself get like, get dislodged and had to like find techniques. And there's, there's like a skill and mastery in learning how to integrate and bring, bring the experience back down into your body. So now, um, after my few DMT experiences, I, um, uh, I don't, I don't use it anymore. Because the other thing is uh, high dose mushrooms and high dose of other entheogens can take you to the same place. And most people don't have an awareness of this because um, it can just be a lot to eat a huge dose of mushrooms. And it, it, takes, a, it takes training. It takes a lot to, to uh, get your sea legs, as Baba Kamini Ii would say. And I share all this also with the awareness that these, these deep dive experiences are not for everyone. You know, I used to really want to encourage other people to um, to step into it with me because I wanted I wanted fellow journeyers. I wanted other people to see what I'm seeing, and uh, I don't do that anymore because I've gone to a certain depth where I really see. I love this analogy of psychedelics of being like the ocean, and in that 
know, anybody can get a benefit from going into the ocean at any depth. Like just putting your toes in, that's really good for you. Like if that's all you want to do, great. Like just do that. You know, and that's that's like microdosing. People get great benefit of, of that from microdosing. And I highly encourage that. And then if you want to swim a little deeper, you know, you can go into like a deeper depth and like jump in and like see some fish and like that's great too. That's awesome. You get a huge benefit from that. I think everybody can benefit from like you know therapist assisted psychedelics, even taking psychedelics at music festivals, which I don't do anymore. I don't recommend because you know the environment's not controllable. But um, you know you get benefit from this stuff. But then there's a deeper level of the of like a deep sea diving, like going way down to the bottom of the ocean. And when you do that, you, you need training, you need the proper equipment, you need to, to get ready, you need to practice, you need to do breathing techniques, you need to do all these things to get ready so that you can do it safely because you die. <laughs> You'll die if you go down there and you're not ready. And uh, entheogens are like that. The high dose experience is not for everyone. But um, it's important for some people to go do that, to bring back the wisdom and bring back the insights so that um, our society can benefit from it.